Now let's quickly talk through the router on a stick scenario. So what is it? So like I said, it's a legacy type of thing. If you're stuck with a layer two switch, then this is the only way to do it, right? But there's a couple of drawbacks. Here we have a single point of failure. As you can see in the design here, this is a single point of failure. If this goes down, that's it, we're toast. Introduces latency and delay. So if this thing is choked, if there's too much traffic going across it, packets will get delayed. Buffering becomes a challenging thing. This becomes a bottleneck. So like I said, this is more of a legacy type concept, but it's still there. And in some networks, you have to use it to be able to get the job done. With that said, let's go ahead and quickly get this piece configured. So right now I'm connected to the switch that you're seeing in your diagram here down below. I'm gonna quickly take a look at show VLAN brief. Well, it seems like we do not have VLAN specified. So I'm gonna put these VLANs or these ports in the appropriate VLANs as we see here in this diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, go to global config mode and put in, the interfaces are different than what you're seeing there. The interfaces for me are interface gigabit 101 connects to VLAN 50. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say switch port mode access. And the next thing I wanna say is switch port access VLAN 50. So this right here creates a VLAN 50 and then puts this port under that VLAN. And I'm gonna repeat the same commands for the other ports. So we're gonna to go to gigabit 102, type in switch port mode access, and then we'll type in switch port access VLAN 60. And finally, we'll say switch interface gigabit ethernet 103, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 70 here. And if you go all the way back and type in show VLAN brief, we can now see that these ports have been allocated to the specific VLANs. So now what we'll see is that these hosts are not gonna be able to ping each other because they are in completely separate VLANs. So right now I'm on a host on VLAN 50. Let's quickly take a look at IP config. And as you can see, I am on VLAN 50. This is my IP address. My IP address is 172. Dot twenty dot fifty dot two hundred. If I wanted to go ahead and ping the host in VLAN sixty, which is one seventy two dot twenty dot sixty dot two hundred, you guys will see that the traffic is not going to go through and my pings will fail. And the reason for that is we don't allow VLANs to talk to each other. That's the whole idea of creating separate broadcast domains. So let me go ahead and. and set up our trunk link and then show you what commands you need to type in on the router for you to allow this to happen. So I'm on the switch here. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a .1Q trunk link. Let's first of all look at our CDP neighbor and see what, com what port we're using to connect to R1. So this is our port. Let's go to global config again. Type in interface gigabit 104 gigabit 104, once we are under this interface, we go ahead and say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q and switch port mode trunk. And this would force this link to become a trunk link. So now we're trunking with the router. So if you were to do, do show interface trunk, this link is now a trunk link that is facing the router. Now let's quickly jump on the router and finish the rest of the config. So now I'm on router one. Let's quickly go ahead and look at show CDP neighbor. 
and see what port we're using to connect to S1. It seems like we're using Gigabit Ethernet 000. What we have to do now is set up three sub interfaces on our router to allow these different VLANs to be processed over that trunk link that we just created. So what that means is we go ahead and type in interface gigabit 000 and we type in dot 50 for VLAN 50 and we type in encapsulation dot 1Q 50. And we also specify the IP address of 172.20.50.1. So that becomes our gateway. That's that. Next thing we do is we now specify the other .1Q trunk, which is 60. So we go, we create another sub interface, Gigabit Ethernet 000 60 These are all virtual interfaces that we're creating. Now we want to type in encapsulation.1Q60. And here we specify the IP address 172.20.60.1, because that's our gateway IP here on this router. And finally, what you want to type in is Gigabit Ethernet 000.70. And you want to say incap.1q70. And you want to say IP address 172.20.70.1. And 255, 255.255, 255.0, which is slash 24. And now if you were to look at show IP interface brief on this router, what we're going to see is that we have the sub interfaces created. And these sub interfaces have IP addresses assigned to them. And if things are set up correctly, from the router at least, we should be able to ping the hosts in each of these VLANs. So each host, remember, has an IP address of 200. So let's see if he can actually make that happen. So as you can see, we were able to do that on VLAN 50. Let's verify VLAN 60. We were able to do that on VLAN 60. And now let's go ahead and do that on VLAN 70. And as you can see, at least from R1 perspective, all the hosts are reachable. Now let's go ahead and, and check out the situation on the hosts. So as you guys remember earlier, our ping failed uh, to host in VLAN 60. Let's try it again. And as you can, can see, we're now able to successfully reach that host. Let's also verify the host in VLAN 70. See if we can actually reach that from the host in VLAN 50. So 172.20.70.200. And we're able to hit all of the hosts in our environment at this point. So this is how you go ahead and set up router on a stick configuration. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.